my Pabagrath order just came in for the Love Collection, so I have a pretty big review for you today. I'm going to be reviewing three of the new eyeshadow palettes, and then I also picked up three of the new liquid eyeshadows. This is just a first impression. Make sure you stay tuned and subscribe because I do do speed reviews after I've used these for a while, but I definitely wanted to overview these if you were considering purchasing these. So three six-pan eyeshadow palettes launched in this collection. They are $65 each. I purchased the bundle of all three of them for $178 which does save you a little bit of money and then they also have one where you can get two for $118 which again makes it just a wee bit cheaper. So this is the box that they come in. This definitely looks like the Bridgerton packaging, does it not? I think it's gorgeous. There's a lot going on, but I do like it. All of these palettes are made in the USA of US and imported ingredients and have a 12 month shelf life. So for those of you who wanted to know, because her Italian formula and her U.S. formula, I do find to be different. I'm looking at all three of the boxes and all three are made in the USA. Now the order and how I'm going to do today's video, in case you wanted to skip ahead, I'm going to start off by swatching and doing a look with all three of the eyeshadow palettes. Then I will move on to the swatches of the liquid eyeshadow and then I'll finish up with comparisons. I did already pull a few palettes that I want to show you what is similar if you do have a large Pat McGrath collection, but before we do that, Let's go ahead and take a look at each of the palettes. So the first palette that I'm going to be featuring is the Mothership Iconic Infatuation. With the lights down, this one is the least unique. I would say I pulled a lot of palettes that were very similar to this, but it also was the one that I was the most attracted to, if I'm being honest. I love how the back of the packaging also has these flowers. I think it's so pretty. But in here you can see we have three mattes and three shimmers. So we're gonna start off with the swatches. I'm gonna start off with the top row right here. They feel pretty smooth. Not the creamiest of cream, but very, very nice. So we have a beige champagne shimmer. This is gorgeous, very, very useful. A neutral pink velvet matte. This I feel it could be pretty also as blush. And then a platinum rose metallic is how she describes this shade. Very beautiful, not unique for Pat McGrath. She definitely has a bunch of rosy tones across the board, but these are shades that are right up my alley. And then we'll get into what looks to be the deeper shades right here. The shimmers do feel nice and creamy, and the mattes, they aren't the most buttery feeling mattes, but it's all about application, and they look buttery on the fingers. So then we have a mauve matte velvet color that is uh, very... Not swatching good. <laughs> okay, I didn't press hard, but still. A coral rose metallic, and then a neutral rose plum velvet matte. So these dark shades are not swatching very good. I just went in a second time to see if that builds it up. It does, so I'm gonna have to pay attention to this one when we get into the looks. I'm going to start off my tutorial with this one. If you aren't interested, feel free to skip to the next palette and for the swatches on those, but I am using a little bit of Urban Decay Primer Potion on my eyelid. I'm gonna be very careful to keep the color close to my eyelid because I'm doing a foundation wear test of the new KVD Serum Foundation today, so I don't want to mess it up with my removal and all of that. But I need to see what's up with these dark mattes. I'm gonna start off with this shade right here. This one is so pretty. I think it's going to be a gorgeous blush. And I like using Pat McGrath shades for blushes as well, even if they're made for the eyes, because she has so many rosy tones, and they do just blend like butter over the cheek if you use a light hand. This is very pigmented, and it's blending out pretty nice as well. Nothing alarming going on over here. I like that. Then we're going to go into the next shade, which is the medium depth level in this palette. We do have some pick up with the shades. And if you were curious about my overall thoughts about this collection, upon initial leak, I did do a, it wasn't a leak, but reveal, I did do a shopper drop video, and overall, I was just like, meh. I think if I didn't have a review channel, I wouldn't be jumping off the walls for this collection, definitely wouldn't be purchasing it. I would be waiting on the reviews first to see if it was worth it. But while this shade did not swatch the best, 
it applied beautifully and it gave me a lot of depth. It also was blending in with that first shade quite seamlessly. So performance outweighs the swatches. That's for sure. I'm gonna dip into a smaller brush. This is the 211 from BK Beauty. I'm really excited with for uh, Risa's eyelashes to come. I just feel like her lash taste is right at my alley. And we're going into the deepest shade next. I'm gonna pat it down first. I'm dipping in once more. I feel like I shook off too much of the product. And yeah, it's giving us some depth. Maybe not as much as I would prefer, but it's also not super dark in the pan. But we have this really stunning blend. All of these colors melted right into one another. So I actually want them to stand out a little bit more. So I'm going to blend a little bit of the lightest peach shade out here to have it show. The mid-tone rose shade, I'm going to bring a little bit closer to the eyelid. And then I'm going to blend that darkest shade. I didn't go into any of this darkest shade again. I'm just using what I have. That's pretty. I'm going to keep the eyeshadow above so I don't mess up my foundation today. So no lower lash line work until the last tutorial. But you get the gist of the quality here, right? That's very pretty. All right, now let's get into the goods, the shimmers. So I'm going to start off actually with the deepest shade and I just want to press it in the outer part of the eyelid. So I did already try on the liquid shadows before I put down any eyeshadow. And you'll see that when I talk about it. I wanna see if these shades are more glittery than the liquid eyeshadow. So this one actually has quite a bit of glitter particles that's getting on my face. So I'm gonna use my finger. This doesn't have as much pigment as I thought it was going to. I mean, it does have a base, but all I'm really seeing is a lot of reflect, which is very pretty. Obviously it's no Blitz Astral from Pat McGrath, but it is very pretty. Let's go into the middle shade now, which is this kind of peachy shade. It's a little brighter. The finger is like oh, so good, though it does look like it's sitting a little bit on top of the eyelid as opposed to blending right in, which is gonna emphasize the texture on more mature eyelids. So some of you might like that really textured look, but it will also be unflattering on others' eyelids, but that is, it's very, very pretty. It definitely adds texture and interest to the eye if that's what you're going for. And then let's test out the lightest shade right here. And this is pretty as well. This one has a nice reflect to it. It's brightening up the eye. I like that. I'm going to finish off by taking the darkest matte in the palette. And I am going to try and do a little bit of a liner here. I want to prevent fallout on my eyelid. So I'm just putting down this paper towel. I mean, this look is stunning. It's very textured. You have a lot of glimmer and reflex. Ooh, I think this one's gonna be my favorite look of all of the palettes just because I love the tones of this. You have depth, it's still very rosy and romantic. I did get some fallout. I don't know if you can see, but uh, the matte shades definitely made a little bit of a mess on my face. I'm gonna pop on a lash so you can get the final idea. Slash, I know it doesn't look perfect. I don't have mascara on. I'm trying to be less abrasive with my eyes when I do multiple looks in a day. So we have to stop right here to keep my eyes in check. But this look is so beautiful. Even though this palette, when I was comparing, was easily the most repeatable. I just, I love this look so much. It's right up my alley. Okay, let's move on to the next one. So this palette is called Sublime Seduction. If you're more into warm tones, I think you will like this one. For me, I'm not as obsessed with it as the other one. It's not my color story, but it has like the same characteristics in terms of a lighter, medium, and deep shade, darker, medium, light with these same exact placements as the last palette. So let's go ahead and swatch these. We'll start off with the top row. Same feeling as the last palettes. So we have a luminous champagne shimmer, which looks like that. It doesn't have any glitters or anything. It's more of a soft shade. And then we have kind of like a mid-tone peachy orange shade. She describes it as a soft neutral brown velvet, but there's a lot of warmth in there. And then we have a copper bronze metallic shade, which 
This has quite a lot of pigment, does it not? Very pretty. I just dug into the bottom row here and I have to say this middle shade, super duper creamy. So we have this dark matte, which is also swatching not great. And then we have this mid-tone kind of bronzy gold shade. And then this is also the mid-tone matte shade. And again, the mattes don't look as impressive. They look a little dry. Hopefully they translate just like the other palette on the eyelid. Not a unique color story once again, but neutral lovers, I think you're gonna like this collection a lot. And here is the two palettes right next to each other so you can see how the colors compare. Definitely different undertones, but same exact levels of depth, pretty much. It's like they took the same colors and then changed the tones to them. We'll do more or less of the same kind of look because it really allows me to play with the color stories here. So I went in with the lightest shade, which is quite bright, I feel like. The mauve palette was a little bit more neutral with this shade and lighter, but this one adds a pop to the eye. Wow. Then I'm gonna blend the edges. I keep staring at this eye, I think it's so beautiful. Taking this mid-tone shade, which honestly has some depth to it, it's pretty dark. And I'm going to pat it on the outer half. And this is with a blending brush. So it's not giving as much depth as it could give if you were to use a shader brush. But that did add a little bit of smokiness to the eye in a very pretty way. Still a very, very warm palette. And blending out beautifully. Then finishing off with this brown, which has more of a neutral undertone. Tapping off my brush to minimize fallout and I'm gonna circle it in the outer corner. And this is adding a lot of depth. Now I'm not adding it in a large capacity. You could potentially still come across some patchiness if you over apply this, just judging by the swatch. I'm not sure, I haven't tried it yet. But if you are careful, you start off with a little bit blend, a little bit blend. I'm not having any issues whatsoever with any patchiness. So if that's something you're concerned about, or maybe you're newer to eyeshadow, little is the best way to start off with. It's going to make it a lot easier. I'm going to blend everything. I don't even feel the need to go back and reapply any color. They laid it down. They gave us depth. And the blend, once again, I'm not having any issues with. But you can see that in the demo. Really stunning. As somebody who prefers mauve tones, this warm look, I just love the blend. It just it looks so effortless. Okay, let's start off with this shade. And these shades you can use with a brush, but you're just gonna save a lot of time if you just use a finger pad. Just picks up the pigment the best, and that goes with any brand, really. So that shade's fine, nothing special. I probably have 300 of colors like these in my collection already. It's not the creamiest of this shade that I've ever used, honestly, though. Like, it's fine, it works, but it's not my favorite of this shade that I owned. I'm excited to see this shade. This one seems to have a little bit more of microfine reflex, and it definitely swatched my favorite. Oh, yeah. And again, it's another one of those shades that makes the eyelid look really textured and interesting, but could translate not as good in a more mature eyelid if you're going for a really smooth look. I'm gonna blend the top here. This is a classic warm look and it's just, it's really good. And then we're gonna finish off with this lightest shade right here. The inner corner, brighten it up. So this one, it has some more gold in it, and I feel like there's a little bit less reflex. It has more of a satiny finish than the lighter one in the mauve palette. But this is another look that's very beautiful. If you're a neutral lover, I think you will like this. If you're more into warm tones, I'm going to also use the darkest matte shade for liner really quickly. You know, the mattes in here aren't the deep darkest, but you can definitely make them work for depth if you would like. They are holding their own. This is like the worst wing though. But with eyeshadow, it's easy to just fix it. And then fallout, I was a little extra careful this time. I still got a little bit. Maybe do your face makeup last with this. But let me pop on some lashes so you can get the final idea. That is really pretty though. As a neutral lover, I do approve. I do. As a Pat McGrath lover, I don't approve of how boring these are. But as a neutral lover, I really do, I really like these, I'm not gonna lie. I might say meh, but they're really, really pretty. Here's the look with Sublime Seduction with the lash. Again, no mascara, but even without, 
I want it to be like, meh, you don't need this, and you probably still don't need it, but where she lacked in originality, she made up for in the quality. I just feel like you look at my eye and you know I'm wearing a high quality shadow. They look so rich on the eyes. They look nice and blended, both of the palettes, so you can't deny the quality on this one. At least they're good quality, because not all of Pat McGrath's six pans are, but I do approve. The mattes feel a little bit more dry, and even the shimmers aren't as creamy as maybe they had been in the past, but they do apply beautifully on the eyes. So I'm gonna pop these off, come back with blank eyelids, and we're gonna play with the last palette. All right, let's get into the last palette. This one was interesting. I wasn't that excited about it, but I know a few of you told me that you were. This is the Velvet Liaison Palette, which is an all matte palette. So take a look. All of the packaging, by the way, is the same. That's why I haven't showed it. For me, I just feel like I have all of these colors. They're similar colors within the other two palettes that just launched, but if you want a good matte, Pat McGrath matte formulation, this is your girl. I know there was a crowd for this. So let's go ahead and swatch these. They feel quite velvety. Very nice. So we have a beige shade. That's gonna be very useful. A good mid-tone warm brown. Ooh, that swatched really bad. This is like a mid-tone plum. I just went in a second time. It got a little better. And we have the bottom row right here. This one's more warm. So we have a deep, chocolate brown oh boy oh boy these are swatching not nice <laughs> very dry swatching this it's kind of like a mid-tone taupe ish kind of shade that one's kind of hard to describe then a little bit more of a red shade ish interesting i mean these are definitely again i own these shades more than likely even within pat mcgrath but i'm gonna play with this i feel like these might this might be pretty let's see what am I to do with six mattes? I just put on another coat of Urban Decay Eye Primer Potion. We're gonna start off with this beige shade that I'm really excited about because colors like these are so useful. I just got a ton of kickback. It's gonna pop this right underneath my brow bone. This is actually my skin tone. I prefer when I apply these kinds of shades underneath my brow to be a little bit brighter. But on my skin tone, it's like my skin tone. But a little bit more warm, maybe like a hint deeper. So it actually is not the most flattering to put it under the brow. But that's where we're going to put it. This is going to help shadows blend. And if it was like a wee bit brighter, it would lift the brow a little bit. Not in this case, but that's fine. Put a little darker on the eyelid than it does look in the pan. How do I want to do this? We'll then go into this shade right here, which is the second lightest. We'll start off light and we'll work dark. This will be a transition shade. This is an interesting shade. I don't quite know how to describe it. It's not much deeper than my skin tone, which makes it a really nice transition shade. So we're going to blend that. I'm actually going to put that on my lower lash line as well. It does add a little bit of depth though. That's Hunky Dory. And then I'm going to go into this shade. I'm just using the same exact brush for all of this so far. I'm squeezing all of these shades onto my eyelid. <laughs> so I'm going to pop this in the outer half of my eyelid. And then with whatever's left on my brush, we are going to soften it. And again. Ooh, that pop of color is very pretty. Let's put some more on this eye. This shade looks a little bit more colorful than I thought. So you can get a nice pop from this palette. As you can see, we are doing a lot of layering here. Hopping into a smaller brush, I'm going to take this shade right here. It looks really pretty. I just want to see what it looks like on the eyelid. I'm leaving a little bit of space in the inner corner, but it's definitely more gray than the other shade. I don't know about putting these all on the eyelid for one look if I'm being honest. Like pulling three or four, you'll probably get something a little bit more cohesive because you can get a nice warm look, a really nice neutral look, or a nice gray toned look. But I just want to make sure that these are all good in quality. So I can't tell too much about quality from that shade in the small area that I placed it, but it looks really smooth and velvety on the eyelid and it looks different from the other shade which is really important to test out. 
I'm going to take the mid-tone brown shade. It has a little bit of warmth. I want to place it on the lower lash line. So you can see the warmth that that brought into the look. Kind of made the look a little bit more smoky as well. Very pigmented. You are getting fallout with these shades, so tap your brush off, but they are adding some pigment. Mm. With lashes, this is going to look nice and smoky. And then finally, we're going into the darkest shade, and I'm going to circle that in the outer corner. Ooh, this is pretty dark. I'm going to use a smaller brush. And again, the technique to get foolproof blending, put down just a little bit, blend it out. Put down just a little bit, blend it out. And you'll get a nice blend. Like, do you see how smooth that looks? Put some on the lower lash line. I mean, I haven't had any trouble with any color in any of these palettes. And in this all matte palette, it's working out splendidly. I would say if Pat McGrath had a weak point, it would be her matte eyeshadows because I have had a few in the past that applied patchy or wouldn't blend as well. And I will continue to search for that. I might have just been lucky. I might have just applied not enough of them like in smaller surface areas. I might need to apply more to make sure they all blend. I'll keep you updated in a palette rankings video. But as of today, everything is working out great. It's just a matter if you feel like you need these. And you know what, actually? This dark brown now, maybe not blending out here as easily as I would like. It's not bad. This is not the worst that I've worked with, but it's not blending out like butter in the outer corners. And that might be the final straw for you because, you know, if you're paying $65 for a palette, every shade butter would be amazing, especially if there's only six shades. But it's not a bad brown, but I would say Viseart definitely has a better formula for a dark brown like that. Okay, we will add some brightness to the eye. But those are all three of the eyeshadow palettes. Honestly, really, really good experience with them. The matte one is still my least favorite just because I didn't need it. They're all quite dark. I would have liked a little bit of a brighter matte, I would say. And putting all six on the eye, they kind of all blend together. So I don't think using all six is necessary to get an eye look. I probably could have gotten some something like this with like two or three shades in the same palette. So the matte is not necessary, but what the matte is going to complement or the matte palette is gonna complement are these new liquid eyeshadows that came out. So these are called the Fetish Eyes Longwear Liquid Eyeshadows. They are $29 each, which is a lot for one single eyeshadow. And what I was really curious about if these were gonna be like a Blitz Astro formula, because in order to justify $25 for a single shadow, one, they better wear amazing, and two, they better look amazing. So I purchased three of the seven shades to share with you. Here is the box that it comes in. I mean, it's a gorgeous box. These are made in Italy with only a six month shelf life. That's not a very long shelf life, but let's just see. I mean, these are supposed to be blendable, crease proof, smudge resistant, have 10 hour wear, and there is 6.1 milliliters or 0 0.20 fluid ounces in here. Let me swatch the ones that I got for you. So this one is Divine Champagne. I feel like this is a great classic color. I've already put these on my eyes so you could see them on the eyelid without me already having eyeshadow underneath. But immediately, as you can see by this swatch, turning lights way down low for this, it's not a Blitz Astro look. It looks kind of like a normal liquid eyeshadow. So I am a little bit disappointed in that. This next one is Cosmic Chartreuse. I was really excited about this. Oh, by the way, the packaging, <laughs> forgot to show you. It's not too heavy, it is plastic, but it doesn't necessarily feel cheap. Really simple packaging. I wish it was glass. That would make it feel more luxe. Here's Cosmic Chartreuse. This one has some nice coverage to it. Sometimes with these shades, they look sheer. If you apply them on a plain eyelid, these have a base to them, which is really great. And then the last one that I picked up was Platinum Bronze. I've got to say, in the swatch, this looked a lot brighter. The swatches online is what I'm talking about, which you know we can't trust them, but this is just so much darker. <laughs> Than what you see online. In fact, all of them are not as impressive as they look like in the Photoshop photos that they have online. Like this one looks so much more glittery. It still has the same level of brightness, but it looks more glittery. This one looks more yellow in the swatches and also has more glitter. And then this one is just way darker. But 
They are very pretty nonetheless, so I'm going to let these sit on my hand and I'm going to put them on my eyelid. So I'm going to start off with the lightest shade, Divine Champagne. And for this particular look, I'm going to focus it on the inner corner and then I'm going to push it out just a little bit more. I'm going to use my ring finger and blend it out. So these do apply very creamy, which is how she said they would feel creamy, and they do. They are definitely blendable as well. This one, really pretty on a plain eyelid without any shadow. I did demo that so that you could see. These apply best when you place it down on the eyelid and then use a finger to blend. But what this one is going to be useful for is a cut crease as well. You can also just use the applicator itself to create kind of a faux cut crease kind of look. It's not going to be as sharp as you say, like concealer, but you can get the look, if you will. But this is really pretty as a brightening shade for this look. If I weren't trying to swatch it for you, I'd carry it over more, but eh, we'll put some right here. These are a nice formula. I don't think they're worth the money. Maybe just pick up like one or two shades that you love. Because you can see they are pretty, but value-wise, I just don't see the value here. Pretty though. And very easy to work with. I think that's what makes these ones. But this one is pretty all over the lid. It's just a great staple color to have. I think it's the most versatile. I'm not going to swatch this one for today's look, but Cosmic Chartreuse, you'll see it on my eyelid demonstration. It has a nice base color to it, so you don't need to have anything underneath. And um, this is great because like I said, they are really blendable, so if you just use a brush or your finger to blend out the edges, you don't need a powder shadow underneath to soften it out. So they do work great on their own. They have a nice base. They are a good quality liquid eyeshadow. For Pat McGrath, I was definitely hoping for something more glimmery, which is not far off for me to think considering the swatches were glittery. So that is disappointing, but it is a very, very pretty color. I think with a dark brown in the crease, this is going to look really nice. Just doesn't go with my current eye look but you saw how that is on the eyelid and then one that really impressed me even though I don't love this shade platinum bronze it's a lot darker than I thought but for the bare eyelid demo I actually put it on the outer corner of the Di divine champagne look and blended it in and it blended in beautifully with the divine champagne it looked like again I didn't need a powder eyeshadow is very easy to work with it's not one of those liquid eyeshadow formulas that's going to stick down on the lid and then you can't move it or it starts to flake if you try to move it you have some play time so really great formula very easy to use I even blended it into the outer corner of the chartreuse look so what I'm gonna do you know what just for today's look I actually want to bring divine champagne a little further in since I'm not using the chartreuse shade and I hate to cover the matte eyeshadow but if you buy the matte eyeshadow palette right it could be fun to pair it with one of these see very easy to work out Beginner friendly for sure. And then I'm gonna take a little bit of platinum bronze. I'm just gonna put it right next to the champagne shade. And it's gonna blend in seamlessly with the rest of the look. They do have a very pretty glitter to them that does stand out. It's just not as much as I wanted for it to be because, you know, it's Pat McGrath, premium price point, and she's always been known for these really galactic style of makeup looks. So I think she definitely played it a little bit on the safe side with these, but they are very pretty. I can't knock the quality. It's just a matter of if it's worth it or not to you. Like, look at that. That, that is gorgeous. These two in particular next to each other, they make a look. Okay, this is really, really pretty. I can't lie. Very glittery, but not as glittery as I wanted them to be. So in terms of wear time, I'm gonna have to test it out. I'm not sure. Today's the first impression. I will let you know in the comments how this look fares today. But when these dry down, you can see they don't really completely set down. We have a little bit of movement. They almost feel like powders. They set down more than a regular powder eyeshadow, but they don't set down as a super hard and drying liquid eyeshadow. I feel like this is kind of the perfect 
set down because on your eyelids, your eyelids move. You have like really microfine wrinkles in your eyelids. You need the formula to be a little bit more soft like this so that it moves with your eyelids and won't crease or flake. So I really like how these feel. They're lightweight. They don't feel cracky. They just feel like a light powder on the eyelid, but a little bit more powerful than a powder. Hopefully that makes sense. Let me pop on some eyeliner and lashes give you my final thoughts and then of course the comparisons. So here is the final eye look. It looks so good and I have to say the liquid eyeshadows, they're prettier than I thought they were. I, I still don't know if it's necessarily worth it, okay? But I do not regret purchasing these. I think they're gorgeous. Now it's time to get into comparisons. I'm just going to start off with the liquid eyeshadows because in the most recent Star Wars collection, she launched these Chromalux Artistry pigments and I was not impressed with these pigments. I thought they looked like a normal pressed eyeshadow. Definitely the liquid eyeshadows are an improvement. So I just swatched one so you could see this is the pigment. While it's pretty, it's missing that va va voom, right? So the liquid shadows, while I wish they were more glittery, they are more glittery than this, and I think you're getting a bigger bang for your buck. Not that these were bad quality, but these are just, they're just better. They're more worth the money. So that's my little two cents on that. Now let's get into the palettes. So I first wanted to do Iconic Infatuation because I do have a lot to compare to. Good old Divine Rose One. This looks like an extension of Divine Rose One. Literally, you guys. <laughs> very, very similar vibes. So if you like Divine Rose One, this is an extension. So right here is the new palette, and then here's Divine Rose One. I mean, not exact dupes, but similar vibes, honestly. So if you have Divine Rose One, that's how they compare. They're kind of close. So I'm not going to swatch these because truly there's only like one shade that is ex exactly identical, which is that bottom left color of the quad. But this is the Eternal Eden quad. And these also look quite similar. The bottom left shade in the quad is the one that I feel like, you know, has a twin in here. But similar vibes, that's for sure. And since the packaging and color story reminded me of the Bridgerton collection, Here's the first palette from the Bridgerton collection. Once again, these ones are definitely related. They have the exact same packaging almost. Very little difference in the designs. And there's only three shades in the Bridgerton palette that were comparable. This one is like pretty much the same as this one, but that's it. But same vibes. And then here it is compared to the second Bridgerton palette. These ones are a little bit more different in person. A couple of the mattes are similar, but not as close as I thought. This one is a good one to compare to. This is the Celestial Nirvana Nude Allure from the Holiday Collection. <gasps> These are really, really close, you guys. Now, the new palette has three mattes. The older one only has one. But look at that! The shimmers, like, these are really, really close. Yeah, she really only stays in one color family. <laughs> it's crazy, but that's the last comparison I have for this palette. Let me move on to the other one. The last palette I want to compare is the Sublime Seduction. And oh my gosh, you guys. So if you have the Mothership Mega Celestial Odyssey, I mean, it's a big palette. Chances were high, but it has that neutral warm vibe to it. So here's what I could find from the old Celestial Nirvana. And then right here is the new palette. I mean, not color for color, you know, not twins, but you can still get the same look with these shades. So if you already have Celestial Odyssey, I mean, we know that this new palette is not super unique, but that's how they compare. The very last comparison is the golden one from this new Star Wars collection. So this palette is a brand spanking new. They're both neutral warm colors. Take a look. New palette, Star Wars palette. Again, same vibe completely. So yeah. Just food for that, food for that, friends. It was a long one, but to close this video out, overall, I think the collection was very good. Very, very good. Is it the most unique? No. If you have all of these and you don't want to spend money, don't buy these. Not a must-have collection, but I definitely think this collection is going to cater to the neutral lovers. So if you feel like there hasn't been a palette from Pat McGrath that has caught your eye and you're really into neutral colors, 
I think you will like these. All of the palettes were really nice quality. My favorite, even though I have it a million times over, I still do really enjoy Iconic Infatuation. I just got my favorite look with it. Velvet Liaison, the all matte palette. Good quality mattes, but I don't love it. I'm not in love with it. So this is the one I personally would pass on. And I do really like the liquid eyeshadows. I liked them more than I thought I would. I was ready to poo-poo on these, but their performance is just really pretty and they're reflecting the sun really nice. So I do like these. They are a bit of a pricey purchase, but they are very nice. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. I hope you enjoyed the looks, the swatches, the comparisons, and that I could help you make a final decision if you were kind of on the edge and unsure. So thank you guys so much for liking this video and subscribing to my channel, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.